Hey, it's Jeff with Flow Software. Excited to show you how to build an application so that you can begin tracking downtime quickly, easily, and without spending a ton of money on integration work. Let's get started. All right, so I've got my Flow configuration open, ready to go. Let's start by creating a folder for this activity. I'm going to bring in an event. And also a metric. Taking a look at our data. Over here on filler one, I have my state tag. I'll associate it with the event. And let's go ahead and just call it state. So if we examine the state tag, we're going to see a bunch of different integer values. Let's look back to the 10th of December. And we can begin to understand our process a little bit from this data. I've got a zero state. This represents my idle time. I have got a um, setup state value 10. Then I'm actually running when I'm at state 20, and I'm at clean inner CIP in state 30. So for my definition of downtime, this is going to be for scheduled and unscheduled downtime. I'm going to capture state zero. That is my idle time. I'm going to capture state 20 when we are supposed to be running and when we don't run. So let's bring both of those metrics in so that I can uh, understand my time that I'm not running um, in both instances. So to do that, I'll use my calculation and I'll just drag the state tag here. I'll create an idle time and I'll do the same thing again. And this will be our down time. All right, so idle time is easy enough to evaluate. Idle time is when I'm at a value zero. When that's the case, we'll write a value of one, and when not, we'll write a value of zero. We'll go ahead and validate the expression, and now that is handled for me. Um, I'm sorry, I double clicked on downtime. That's not what I want. We'll save that for idle time. Let's do the same thing here real quick. There we go, so that's my idle time. And now that's validated, and I see the disk come off of idle time with the validation. Now for my downtime, downtime, if we refresh that data, let's look from the 12th. Downtime is when I am in state 20 and I have these instances. So it's greater than a 20, less than a 30 will determine all of my downtime events. So we'll say value is less than 30 and value is greater than 20. When that's the case, we'll write a one. When not, we'll write a zero. Validate. And now where I had seen these jumps, I should see a true false. Perfect. All right. So that is now done. Um, next, let's go ahead and create an event that will tell us um, every single time that we go into either idle state or we go into our downtime state. So on this event, I'm going to say when idle state is equal to one or when downtime is equal to one, then that will create my event. And how do we end this? We will end this um, when this is untrue. So when state is rather when downtime is equal to zero or when idle time is equal to zero. All right, let's go ahead and backfill that. We're gonna go the whole way back to December the 1st, and we'll run the um, data engine 
which is now going to evaluate those conditions and return every time that that was true. All right, so the short little times are those down times. The long times are likely those idle times. So next, I want to create some feedback so that my operators can tell me in each of these events, were we scheduled, were we unscheduled, um, and what was the primary cause. So to do that, I will use my enumeration tool set. So my enumerations allow me to create multiple um, different ordinal pairings for the contextualization of my data. So for instance, I've already created a classification and the classification is going to give me a choice of saying, hey, we were scheduled or we were unscheduled. Um, then I have built in a discipline. Was it a mechanical issue? Was it electrical? Was it safety? Um, was it a meeting? Was it a break? Um, and then finally, um, I also have downtime reasons. So if I select mechanical, was it due to conveyor mistracking or incorrect tooling setup? If I select a break, was it my first 15 break, my lunch, my second 15 break, and so on? Um, I'm going to go ahead to my discipline and we'll add, let's add a idle and we'll make idle as part of our scheduled downtime. So an enumeration group allows me to create listings of these um, and create a, a hierarchy of parent-child relationship. So we will build our own and we're going to call this one uh, downtime demo. When we open it up, I'll bring in my first, which was my classification, just dragging and dropping. Then we had our discipline, dragging and dropping, and then we had our reason, dragging and dropping. Control N creates multiple mappings, and then all I do is pick the appropriate um, pairings. So this was idle, and part of idle, there's nothing to say here, we're just idle. We could have scheduled, that could be due to a break. And then breaks could be for a 15 minute break. We may have scheduled due to a break. And break could be for lunch. Okay, so you get the point of this. I can create as many of these as I need. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick handful so that we can uh, essentially demonstrate how this then works after that. Okay, now that that is done, it's time to take my event. We'll pause the event, undeploy it, and now I'm going to come down to my attribute section of the event. I'm going to create a new attribute that is manually entered. And this will be my downtime class. My downtime discipline and my downtime reason. Okay, so now this is done. I'm ready to deploy it. And each of my downtimes are now ready to be classified um, using a web form. So since I'm going to use a web form, I'll come over to the charts. We will create a new web form. Let's add a category to our web forms. We'll call this our downtime. And within this, we're going to create a new event based form. All right, so this form um, I don't have to do a lot on the properties 
in order to get this ready to use for this demo. But I will just kind of demonstrate a little bit if you're new to our forms or to our charts, um, what some of these will do for you. So obviously <clears throat> things like margin padding, font size, um, coloring, titles. Here, let's just give it a nice name. And the period. So period type is looking at our calendars or our event periods. Um, with our calendar period, I'm referencing my production calendar. And do I want to show um, events for today, for the previous days, for the week, for the year? So I could say, let's look at the week. Let's look from start of week to the current day or current time. Or I could say start of week to the end of week. Let's go start to end on this. Um, how many weeks before the beginning of the week? Do I want to look at last week and come to the end of this week? Do I want to look at last week and go to the end of next week? I'll be okay with just current week. How fast do I want this to refresh? Let's refresh every um, 60 within my headers. What information do I want within my headers? Um, more about this maybe later on if we have time on this video. If not, I'll do another video on it. And then tabs. Tabs are, think of it as a, um, a tab on a web form or a tab on a data table. This is going to give me the ability to use one form for multiple things. In my case, I'm going to use um, this form for my downtime event. I'll let that come over uh, and paste in. I'm just working on that now. So once this has come in and is now associated with this tab, that is the downtime line one event is associated with this tab, that's when I will begin to actually classify the uh, downtime event. Okay, so I've got a little bit of work I still need to do to make this, uh, to make this ready for entry. I need to come to my discipline and filter for discipline. by my um, enumeration group called Downtime Demo. So the group column discipline will be filtered based on the uh, classification. DT class, same thing for reasons. by discipline. So now I should be able to right click on the form and launch it. Um, what we are now able to see is that I have all of my downtime starting with Sunday at 6 a.m. which is where I've defined my calendar inside of Flow. Remember that in Flow I can define when my year starts, when my week starts, what the time of day um, for the start of my day. I can define my shift patterns. I can define multiple calendars and multiple patterns per flow instance. So here my week starts on a Sunday at 6 a.m. This is my first event of downtime. It was 27.3 minutes long. How will I classify it? Let's say that it was scheduled and that we were idle. Now, as soon as I do that, that information is updated inside of my flow database. So that means that if I look at my attributes and go far enough back, that that will come through back on the 10th. Um, of course, I can't see that far back. I'm only seeing a preview at 157. So let's pop over to 157, instance 157. Let's code that for this example. So here's 157. We'll say it was scheduled. This was idle. And now when we take a look, there it is, attribute value of scheduled, idle, no reason code. So let's go ahead and come through some of this data. And we'll just do the, the most recent. And let's put some different codes down. We'll start with two unscheduled. We'll say a mechanical due to it being starved. Um, let's do the same things happened again, just a little bit long, later. 
And this time we had a scheduled break. We had an unscheduled electrical issue due to a PLC malfunction. Another unscheduled, this time it was safety. We just had a refresh. I asked it to refresh every 60 seconds. Infrastructure issue and then finally scheduled. And this was a shutdown. So now with these half a dozen coded, I'm able to look back into flow and see that my classes, my disciplines, and my reasons are here. So now what can I do with this information? Well, it's been recorded inside of Flow's database and it's been associated with each of these events. Now I can come over to my downtime event and I can start to take the data behind this event and aggregate it into hourly or daily, weekly, monthly KPIs. So let's start with just a general downtime count. I'd like to do a running count of total downtime per hour throughout my day. So I'll take the downtime event and I'll drag it onto the hour KPI. So this is my hourly downtime count. Let's put it over here with the metric. And when we look at the retrieval, we'll see that the source of my data is coming from the downtime event. I can choose how I want to aggregate that event. I'm going to do it based on counts of downtime that have started within the current, uh, within this hour's slice. Scaling factor, I'll leave it one, and I don't want to filter by any of my um, classifications of downtime. I just want a total count. So we'll go ahead and deploy that. And then I'm going to ask this to accumulate every hour to give me a shift to date number, to give me a day to date number, and to give me a week to date number. Now, each of these can be further aggregated. So it's sourcing from the count KPI, and then it's asking, do I want to take a sum? Do I want to take an average? Do I want to do a min, a max, a delta, and so on? This is easy enough. I just want to sum. So I'll deploy all three of these at the same time with a right click. And it'll backfill those back to December the 1st as well. So my hourly count is likely already done. There's a value of a one every time that we had one occur during an hour. I doubt I've had more than one per hour. Let's go ahead and change that format so that we get an integer. And then here's my shift to date. Same thing, we'll change the format. My day to date. And my week to date. If we take a look at the week to date, then what we will see is that this week to date has continued to climb. If I'd like to look at it in more depth, I'll throw it onto a chart and take a look at it in just a little bit. What else do we want to have on here? Um, well, that's my downtime count. I could also use the filter piece. Maybe I want to understand exactly what was my count for unscheduled downtime. Uh, and this I'm going to start at a day. So this will be my, um, my daily unscheduled downtime count. Again, I'll drop it under the metric. We'll stick with count, but this time I'm going to do a filter attribute based on class. I only want the unscheduled. Backfill to the first, and off we go. And I'm going to take this as a daily, as a week to date, also as a month to date. All right, so one of the really nice things about Flow is that Flow keeps a um, constant tracking of all of the dependencies of events, of attributes, of measures. So that means that even though this is now already calculated, and I have a 
number already associated with my daily count. So I had three on the 12th that were associated with my unscheduled downtime. That's already been done. It's already been written into Flow's database. But watch what happens when something changes in the underlying history. If I come back over, so from the 12th at 6 a.m., starting here, to the 13th at 6 a.m., coming to here, I had three unscheduled downtime events. So if I change this scheduled to an unscheduled, we'll just leave it at electrical loose terminal, without me doing anything on Flow's side um, to, to tell Flow that I, that I needed to recalculate, Flow is monitoring those data points. And because I changed the classification, even though Flow has already run that and stored that result, Flow will see that change and rerun that for me. Um, depending on the way that I have my data engine configured, this could take um, a minute to catch. It could take 30 seconds or just 10 seconds to catch. If we look at mine, mine's already picked it up. I now, for this day, from 6 a.m. to the 13th at 6 a.m., I have two versions of that count. Four is my preferred version in version number two. Three was my previous version and still stored as version number one. So Flow will always keep track of those changes for me. It understands the relationship of my data to other calculations. And it did the exact same thing here for the week to date. That week to date number would have also changed. And look, it went from three to four with a second version as well. Super helpful. It's one of those things that has plagued manufacturing for decades around once you calculate something, um, having underlying data change, which often happens, especially in the first 24 hours, 48 hours, sometimes even up to the first week. Um, we handle that automatically for you. Okay, let's talk about some of the other cool things that we can do with this information now that we have it. Um, we've demonstrated the filtering um, aspect of it, but let's say that I'd like to understand, uh, let's put a lot of data. Let's come in and code. Let's code a few different things unscheduled. All of them notice are gonna default to electrical. That's fine, I, I want that for this example. Okay, so I've got some more data in here um, showing me some electrical issues that we've been having and it doesn't really matter what the subcategory is. I'm gonna base it on electrical. So now I'd like to understand what is the mean time between electrical uh, downtime events. So I will take my event, I will drop it onto um, my day again, and this will be my mean time between events uh, electrical downtime. And so I'll do a combination of my Event aggregation will become duration between events. My scaling factor um, is going to be, um, oh, here, I want to take an average. I want to know across the day what was the average, not the sum of the mean time. My scaling factor is going to report naturally in milliseconds, so I'll convert that to minutes. And then my filter attribute will be based on the discipline. The discipline here is electrical. I can deploy that. And in just a little bit, I will have both the day to day as well as the week to date and the month to date. Now I'm taking an average um, here. I don't want to sum the average. Instead, I want to average the average Same on the week to date. I'm going to take an average of my averages. Let's see if it's done already. And it is. Here is my month to date. And so far, my average mean time month to date 
is 132 minutes between electrical events. So very easy way to be able to drag and drop um, my events and my measures um, and create all kinds of different pieces of information that can be helpful. Of course, I might also just want to do some type of a daily um, down unscheduled downtime total. So we'll take the active duration. We'll sum it. We'll scale it out in milliseconds. And I said I only want unscheduled. That's done. And again, might as well just give myself a week to date and a month to date number. These will sum up which I want them to by default, so I'll deploy them the way that they are. Unscheduled downtime total in minutes per day, already calculated, month to date in minutes per day, also already calculated. So I can tell already just based on the way I've um, classified my data that I've had 72.67 minutes of total downtime for the month. At the end of the month, that resets back to zero, or at any point if I wanna just understand what each of my days looks like, I have that information now available. Now, uh, in another video, I will demonstrate how we can take this information and make um, additional visualizations of it. So if I just wanted to put this on a widget and make it available for a dashboard, or if I wanted to see it on a chart, if I wanted to create a data table, um, how would I do that? All of that can be done relatively easily inside of our chart section. Um, and then at the same time, what if I wanted to get this information out to other systems? How would I do that? So stay tuned for future videos. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. Information at flow-software.com. Thanks.